Next, let's talk about perceiving and presenting the self. So just as our perceptions of others affect how we communicate, so does our perception of ourselves. And this brings us to the idea of the self-concept. The self-concept refers to the overall idea of who we think we are. It's what we say in response to the question, tell me who you are, right? Or tell me a little bit about yourself. And our self-concept is often formed through our interactions with others and their reactions to us. And this we refer to as the looking glass self. So the looking glass self um, is when we see ourselves reflected in other people's reactions to us and then form our self-concept based on how we believe other people see us. And this is why you often hear it say that teachers have such a significant impact on the lives of young children. Because when children are learning and growing, they need encouragement and um, it really has a really big impact on how they perceive themselves. Let's say that a child is taking a spelling test or a math test and they don't do too well on it. And the teacher or the parents of that child tell the child that they are stupid for doing uh, for doing poorly on that test or that they didn't try hard enough or things along those lines, right? That child is going to carry that with them often for the rest of their lives. Um, if a child is told at a young age that they are too stupid to do math, they might go through the rest of their schooling career thinking that they are bad at math. And it's simply because they they gave up, right? They saw reflected in, uh, in the important adults in their life that they were stupid, that they didn't understand math, and they got it into their head that they don't understand math. And so as a result, it becomes a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy in that way. So other people's reactions to us have a significant impact. If instead those teachers and those parents had said, hey, um, what are you struggling with here, right? How can we help you to grow? That would show that student that they aren't stupid, that math isn't something that they don't understand, that they can work to better understand this in the future. Um, so those reflections are really important. And another important way that we form our self-concept is through social comparison theory. Now, we've talked about this in another chapter, so I'm just going to briefly touch on it here. But as a reminder, social comparison theory is when we describe and evaluate ourselves in terms of how we compare to other people. And when we do this social comparison, we are often looking at how superior or inferior we are to someone or how similar or different we are to them. And again, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can have really negative consequences if our reference group, the individual or individuals to whom we are comparing ourselves, isn't appropriate, right? If we have very little in common with that reference group, that can have a really negative impact on our self-concept. So we do have to be careful when we are comparing ourselves to others.